And we're live. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Animation Combination with your host, Ibrahim, aka Mark Brown. Episode 2 of my season 2 of Who Wants to Be Millionaire Animation Edition. Today we have with us, back from last season, if you might remember her, Miss Rachel Wagner. Hello. Hi. How are you today? I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> Thanks for coming back on the show. You're welcome. I hope I do a little bit better. We'll see. I, I don't know if trivia is my specialty, but... Uh, we'll yeah. we'll see. I'm sure you'll do fine. <laughs> so for, so for people who don't know who you are or didn't watch the last season, can you introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, yeah, I um, am a I guess animation addict, as we like to say. Uh, I have a blog. Uh, I've been a blogger for uh, my personal blog. I've been a blogger since 2007, and then my Disney blog. I've been a blogger for uh, since 2014. So I have a lot of fun with that. And then I have a YouTube channel called Rachel's Reviews. And I post pretty much daily content on there. So it's a lot of fun. Okay, cool. And I'll put links to her blogs and YouTube channel below so you can check it out. So thanks. What, 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 what type of questions are you hoping to see today? Hoping for Disney questions. <laughs> uh, I, I have a better chance for that. I'm hoping, I hoping less TV questions. Because those are so hard. It's just hard to know everything about every TV show. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so Oscar questions. I, I, I'd be pretty – I've watched every single animated Oscar nominee. So I do. I think I would do pretty good on those. But we'll see. Okay, cool. Do you even watch Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius? What's that? Do you even watched Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius? <laughs> I did. <laughs> <laughs> That was not the, that was not the worst of the best uh, animated <laughs> by by a long stretch. Shark Tale uh, and Brother Bear. Woo. I'd watch I watch uh, Jimmy Neutron all day over those two. Okay, I haven't seen that one yet. So. <laughs> I'll have to check it out. Yeah, that was the first year they ever had the category, so. Oh yeah, I think that's 2001, right? Yeah, hmm. well, that's why I think <laughs> <laughs> it got nominated. Nice, so. nice. Anyway, so yeah, I do I do pretty good. I think if it was there's Oscar question, but we'll see. We'll see, and hopefully, hopefully you'll go far. So for no Flintstones, who, hopefully. <laughs> no, yeah, you have to watch the first episode she did last year to get that reference. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you who are just tuning in, who wants to be going here? It's a twelve question anime, uh, twelve question multiple choice game. As long as Miss Rachel Wagner keeps getting questions right, she goes higher up the ladder. Once she gets one's wrong, she loses and she leaves with the last safe haven of points that she has. She has three lifelines to help her. Fifty fifty gets rid of two wrong wrong answers. A phone or friend if she chooses, which is she can call someone on the phone to ask her for help, or an ask the expert. We have an expert on this show who was Robert Lydon, who was the winner last season. We put out the questions to him before, and he answered them. So if she uses that lifeline, she can see how he answered and decide whether or not she wants to go with that. Okay, Rachel Wagner, are you ready to play Millionaire? I'm ready. Great, let's play Millionaire. Um, can you see the screen here? Yes, I can. Good. See, I changed the color and everything from last season. Ah, there you go. Yeah, I think it looks better this time. But that's just me. <laughs> and once again, our expert is Robert Lydon. You can check out his YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Robert. He does movie reviews, trailer reviews, animated stuff, and he's a big Once Upon a Time fan. So if you're big into Once Upon a Time, he's probably going to have to on some so all your favorite episodes. So check him out. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, he's great. You know him, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. And this is the ladder of points. The, um, just to remind you, the yellow ones are the benchmarks. Once you get those, you cannot lose them. OK. OK. Shall we begin? Yep, let's do it. Let's go. 500 points, Rachel. In 1955, animation legend Walt Disney opened a theme park in California that would be known as what? Disney Planet, Disneyland, Disney Continent, Disney Area. I want to go to Disney Planet, but um, uh, no, uh, B, Disneyland. And nothing is final until you say final answer. Is that your final answer? That's my final answer. Disneyland, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Good job. <laughs> Have you been to Disneyland? Yes, many times. Okay, I've 
I live in Orlando, so I've only been to Walt Disney World, but I like to check out Disneyland sometimes. I've only been to Disney World once when I was 11. Oh. So I, but I've been to Disneyland because I'm in Utah, so it's not too far. Yes. Disneyland. How far of a drive is that? Um, it's like, I think that's like eight, nine hours. Oh, that's really good, actually. <laughs> yeah, not too bad. That's cool. Okay. Now, let me remind you, the next one is the 1,000 points. If you get it wrong, you lose or leave with nothing. I don't think it's going to happen, but just have to warn you, all right? All right. Oh, and also remember, take your time to say final answer. Don't rush okay. to say it, and then, you know, you can't take it back. <laughs> okay, 1,000 points. Released in 1986, Castle in the Sky was the first animated film made by which Japan-based company? Pixar, DreamWorks Animation, Studio Ghibli, Blue Sky Studios. Uh, C, Studio Ghibli, final answer. You said that very quickly. Have you seen this movie? I actually haven't seen that one, believe it or not. I need uh, to. I want to. A lot of people like it. I, I think it's just okay, but you see for yourself and see what you think. <laughs> All right. The answer is correct. Good job. Yeah. Thanks. Yes. You made to them 1,000 points. See, you get, you get I think I, I think this next one was where I went out last time, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, you, uh, no, I think it was the fourth question. I think you got the third one, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, hopefully you can do it this time. Just breathe, take your time, okay. and have fun. <laughs> All right. 3,000 points. That's good. Which country does the 2016 Laika animated film Kubo and the Two Strings take place in? New Zealand, Japan, Ecuador. Happy C. Japan, final answer. I see this movie yesterday for the first time. Did you like it? I, I did. I, I really enjoyed it, especially the animation. Yeah. The, the only problem I had, I, I, I think maybe the marketing made it look like it was an extremely adventure-packed movie from like beginning to end. And there were just mm -hmm. there were a lot of slow scenes in it that, than I expected in the movie. So I think that was the only disappointment I had. Interesting. Yeah, I didn't have a problem with that. I, I just, I wish it had ended just a hair sooner and I would have loved it. But they had to kind of tag on a little bit of a happy ending, kind of. They oh, yeah. couldn't end it on more of a bittersweet note, which I think would have been braver. I would have liked yeah. it a little bit better, but I really liked yeah. it. Yeah, the ending is weird. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, Kubo or Zootopia? Which one do you think is better? Which I think is better? Yeah. Uh, that's a hard question. I think I've Kubo been wins. I've been going back and forth myself. I think Kubo wins in terms of animation alone, but if I had to take into account everything else, story and and, and pacing and everything, I'd probably have to say Zootopia. Yeah, I'm kind of this. I'm kind of the same right now. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how the Oscars decide. <laughs> yeah. Rachel, your answer is. Correct. Yay. I don't think you had any doubt about that one, though. <laughs> now, that one I knew. Nice. See, there it is, Mr. Kubo, right there. All right. Here's the okay. day of reckoning. Here. Here's the day of reckoning. Can you pass it? I'm pretty sure you can. You can do this. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget, you have three life to help you if you need them. All right. 5,000 points. That's good. In the Sony Pictures animation films, The Smurfs and The Smurfs 2, which singer voices the character Smurfette? Lady Gaga, Kesha, Pink, Katy Perry. That would be D, Katy Perry, final answer. Oh, is history going to repeat itself, or did you get this one right? How sure are you? Positive. Oh, she's positive. Let's see. Your answer is correct. Good job. <laughs> You make me remember those horrible movies. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the point of the game, I guess. <laughs> yeah. there. Okay, great. You passed, you passed your Yay. point last time. There's nothing new. All right. But we want to get you farther. We want to get you all the way to the million. Let's see if you can do that. 10,000 points. I would have been really bitter at Smurfs. 
<laughs> in the 2015 Blue Sky Studios film, The Peanuts Movie, what book does the character Charlie Brown read for his book report? Les Miserables, Don Quixote, Bleak House, War and Peace. I know this because it inspired me to actually read it. <laughs> I, I said, if, if Charlie Brown can read it, I can read it. So that would be D, War and Peace, final answer. I have a feeling you get this one right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I like how, it, yeah, well, no, I do, yeah, you got that right, correct. <laughs> I like how in the in the movie they they tell him, um, no, it, it's War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy, and then he thinks he thinks it's Leo's Toy Store by. Yeah, I know, I like that too. <laughs> uh, I I loved, you know me, I loved the Peanuts movie. It just charmed the socks off of me. I thought it was just. And it just makes I put it on. It's like uh, my version of uh, of like a um, antidepressant. I just put on Peanuts movie, and it just makes me happy. <laughs> yeah, it, it does that. It, it's definitely the blue sky's magnum opus, I think. Yes, <laughs> I think Ice Age Five solidified that. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know about how do you feel about that Ferdinand movie they're doing? Uh, which one? They're making a movie about Ferdinand the Bull coming out next year. Oh. We haven't really seen anything about it yet. So I yeah, I have to it. see more. <laughs> yeah. From it, but I think I think the Peanuts movie will be there in Magnum Opus for a long time. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. I think so too. I wish just I don't know. Like yeah, I get it. It's not the most like creative as far as story, but I just thought it executed what I was trying to do really well. Yeah, yeah. So it was the Peanuts movie. It's exactly what I expected from yeah. the Peanuts movie. All right. So anyway, sometimes I think movies uh, just try to make it too complicated when you just keep it really simple. It's just Charlie Brown trying to impress a girl. Yeah, he doesn't, need to, need. Like, he doesn't need to go on like some adventure around the world or something. Yeah, and I like that they kept it like it, they weren't trying to be all like hip and cool and, and uh, you know, like like the Smurfs or something like that, some atrocity. Yeah, like have rap or something. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Exactly. Yeah. So, all right. Okay. Whew. Okay. Rachel Wagner, you did five questions without any lifelines. They only two away from the next benchmark. Oh, my gosh. Did you think you'd get this far? Waiting for the Flintstones question. The Flintstones are going to come back. I wonder. Let's see. Let's go. 20,000 points. Which of the following Rankin Bass productions was not done using stop motion animation? The Easter Bunny is coming to town. <laughs> Little Drummer Boy. Nestor the Long Eared Donkey. Long Eared Christmas Donkey. The Cricket on the Hearth. Ooh. You did a Rankin Bass. I, I did. Do right? mm -hmm. you see all these four? Yes. Uh, well, the Easter Bunny is coming to town. I don't think it's real. Uh, I think it's Cricket on the Hearth. You have lifelines if you need them. Uh, I'm just not sure if there's... those. These movies are so weird. Um, yeah. <laughs> I guess I'll, I'll do the expert. You want to ask Robert? Okay, we'll go to Robert Light. Remember, you don't have to go what he says. It could be right, it could be wrong, it's just how he answered, okay? Okay. Robert Lydon, what did he say? I asked him this question, he said, C, Nestor the Long-Eared Christmas Donkey. Oh, see, I know that's wrong. <laughs> okay, so Robert didn't have much there. <laughs> I, I'm, I, I'm willing to uh, go out on this one if I have to. I'm, I'm, not, I'm really pretty sure it's the cricket on the hearth. D, final answer. All right. You didn't know this one. You asked Robert, and you were pretty sure his answer was wrong. And he went to Cricket on the Heart. Positive, his answer is wrong. Positive, his answer is wrong. I'm guessing you've seen it. Nestor the long eared donkey, whatever it's called. All right. Yes. Is this it? Rachel, your answer is. It's either that or that Easter Bunny one. Correct. Yes. Yay! Good job. <laughs> no, that's the only one. I wasn't sure if they're really because yeah. I believe it because Rankin Bass is insane. So I I believe that Easter Bunny's coming to town is a real thing, but I 
I, I wasn't sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is a real thing. I got is it, it from really? A movie. Yeah, I haven't seen it, but I got it from a list of Rankin Bass movies. <laughs> I think Fred Astaire was the narrator on that. <laughs> on that one too? I like Santa Claus? Yeah. That is funny. Yeah, I, that yeah. one I have not I, that one I have not seen or heard of. Uh, Easter Bunny's coming to town. There you go. I think I think I think Mason mentioned it one time in one of the Rotoscopers podcasts. Oh really? As like, as like being like a really bad one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, they there, I, I I didn't even finish uh, my series. I don't know if you noticed that, but I just uh, I don't know. I just wasn't enjoying it. So if you're not yeah. enjoying it, then what's the and point? Just, yeah, true. Have you ever seen this one, Cricket on the Hearth? <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, okay. It's it's like all of them, but kind of really strange and 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 not uh and and not bad, but just I don't know. They just get they just get really repetitive when you're watching a whole bunch of them. Like none of them are bad, watching them in and of themselves. They're all sort of weird and different. But when you're watching them yeah. every day, I was like, oh, I'm really not enjoying this. <laughs> so yeah. Well, that paid off for you. And now when you're done with this, you can go watch the Easter Bunny's coming to town. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And see. see I would be bitter against it, like I was with Flintstones. <laughs> all yeah, year. Yeah, good thing got this right. The whole year, you didn't like me. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you saw the pizza Joby, you raised your fist. That's right. Your... <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right, Rachel Wagner. Okay. The next question is 32,000 points. You get that right, you cannot lose that whatsoever. Yay! You, get wrong, you lose and leave it a thousand. Remember, you have lifelines, and you can always walk away when, when you want. Okay. Because remember, remember, the top five people, if no one gets to the million, I bring the top five back. So. Keep that All right. All right. Breathe. <laughs> well, you, you probably should be breathing, not me. Let's go. 32,000. All right. Here we go. One animation film, an American tale, Five Will Goes West. Which classic Hollywood actor voices a canine sheriff named Wiley Burke? Gregory Peck. Robert Mitchum. Jimmy Stewart. Burt Lancaster. C. Jimmy Stewart. Final answer. Oh, I know. No, no, the no. rotoscopers are reviewing this, I think, uh, after Kubo. Yeah, I think so, too. So that'll be fun. I'm 100% sure on that one. All right, so let's not keep suspense. Yes, correct. <laughs> <laughs> Great job. I actually really like that movie. I think it's it's a lot of fun. I've seen it once, which was years and years ago, and, it, and, I, and I had seen it before I saw An American Tale. And I, oh, I really? That's movie. interesting. Yeah, I remember liking it too. Yeah. That's before I knew who Jimmy Stewart was and getting into classic Hollywood and all that. It has an underrated Disney song. I'm not Disney. Um, animated song called uh, "Dreams to, Dreams to Dream." I like it oh, a lot. Yeah, I, I, I sang it for a recital once. Uh, is that the song that one of like the showgirl cats sang one time? It, it, it's 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 uh, it's sort of the replacement for somewhere out there. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. I like it though. I probably maybe like it better than somewhere out there. Anyway, anyway yeah, um, it's a nice little song. Yes, and the good news is you're at thirty-two thousand points. All right, woo! Uh, yeah, this, this is the looking. redemption round. I, but uh, at least I made it farther than I did last time. This is good. Yeah, and no matter what, you cannot lose with less than thirty-two thousand. And you still have two lifelines. You could go far further. All right. It's looking good now, huh? Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, and I have to tell Robert to see Nestor the Longer Donkey. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. So the next one, even if you don't know, you might as well guess because you have you can't lose anything. All right. Let's go. Fifty-four thousand. Although now lost, the nineteen seventeen film El Apostol is considered to be the first animated feature film ever made. Which country was it from? Ecuador, Paraguay, Argentina, Uruguay. Uh, C, Argentina, final answer. You're like on fire today, apparently. <laughs> that one I know. Oh, got lucky. Well, are you correct? Do you remember me so you're right? Your answer is correct, which I don't think you got it. <laughs> as long as it's sticking to, I, I see, I'm much better with, with movies than with TV. 
Yeah, well, yeah. We haven't had a TV question yet, right? <laughs> Yeah. This is a this is a fan made um poster I found online. So oh, very cool. cool. So whoever whoever you are, I'm I'm glad they can make this. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. just hard with TV because there's just so many shows. I mean, it's hard to know everything about every show. No, no, yeah, that's true. That's true. Because yeah, the Flintstones one got me last time. But let, let's see if there's another one coming up. <laughs> Four questions. <laughs> All right. Except for Simpsons, back. that's really watch the negative Simpsons question wrong. Oh, okay, Simpsons. Well, let's see if you get that. One twenty-five thousand points. All right. In the twenty twelve Iron Man animation slash Sony Pictures animation film, The Pirates Band of Misfits, which character has one voice actor in the UK version Ooh. of the film and another voice actor in the US version of the film? This is a hard one. A final pirate. Pirate of the Dark. Pirate of the Scarf. Pirate King. Ooh. This is a tough one. Uh, let me get 50-50 on this. It's a 125,000, so it can't be too easy. Yeah, <laughs> okay. that's true. You want a 50-50? Okay. Yeah. Are you two wrong answers? Are you leaning towards anything? I, I don't know this one, to be honest. Okay, so let's help you out. Albino Pirate, Pirate King. Have the Pirate King is, yes, I actually really like it. And Pirate <laughs> King is Hugh Grant, so I can't imagine that he's the one. That has a different voice for UK. Um, uh, I don't even remember the albino pirate if he had lines. Uh, I, I guess I'm going to have to go with a albino pirate because I'm pretty sure they would have Hugh Grant as 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 a, a voice in the UK. Uh, I'll go with the a albino pirate uh, final answer. All right, you could have walked away, but you went without buying a pirate. Oh, true. I forgot I could do that. Yeah, well, too late now. Oh, well. Uh, well, I can tell you, the pi Pirate King is actually not Hugh Grant. He was a pirate captain. The Pirate King was like the main pirate at the Pirate Awards show, if you remember him. He was like the major pirate, like, lord. Oh, captain. shoot. Okay. And he was voiced by Brian Blessed. The good thing, though, is he was voiced by Brian Blessed in both. Um, ah. and UK. So you have that right. <laughs> <laughs> that is a hard question. That was yes. that was tough. That was tough. This is an albino pirate here. Yeah. Okay. Was, in the UK version, I think it was voiced by Russell, Russie Toby or something like that. And the American version, he was voiced by the late Anton Yelchin. Oh, cool. Yeah, who died recently this year. Right, right, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, that was a bit suspenseful, wasn't it? Yeah, that was. <laughs> you got scared once I started explaining Pirate King. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you're three away from the million, you have one lifeline, and you can always walk away whenever you want. All right. Oh, by the way, he wasn't also, there were, there were other characters, too, who had different um, voices in the UK and the US version, but from the four choices, he was the right answer. Interesting. All right. Okay. Okay. Let's go. 250,000. Whoa. This is exciting. The animated short Serenade takes place in the world of which illumination entertainment film? Ooh. Despicable Me. Secret Life of Pets. Hop. The Lorax. Um. I think this was, the, this was the point where Ben lost on to <laughs> 250,000. Interesting. Sarah, I've never even heard. I admit it, I have not heard of this. Um, I, I guess I'll I'll do the expert. Yeah, it's your last uh, lifeline. I asked Robert again. Yeah. Robert, what did you say this time? You didn't help last time, but let's see what he said this time. He said, this is tough. It's not Despicable Me or The Super Life of Pets. I feel it's the Lorax so deep. Interesting. He's so sure. I don't think that they've done a short with Hop. I don't think anyone remembers Hop nowadays. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. It's gosh, he's so it's sure it's not Despicable Me, huh? And it's not Secret yeah, Life of Pets because they just did it. Um. You know what? I'm gonna go out uh, swinging. I'm gonna say D the Lorax. I'm gonna go. Um, uh, final answer. 
Is it allowed to weigh again? But yeah. If you went with it, okay. Be the law reps. How sure are you? Not sure at all. <laughs> well, you asked Robert one time before and he got the question wrong. Did he redeem himself? Did he get this one right? And in turn, did you get it right? Rachel Wagner, your answer is. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, serenade. It was it was about like one of these barber loot. It was like oh. all these animals in the forest trying to uh, serenade their loved ones. And, See, like, I've I've that. ridden that movie from my mind as well. So yeah, <laughs> uh, Smurfs and the Lorax. <laughs> this is a fun game for you, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yes. I'm really really hoping they don't mess up how the Grinch stole Christmas. Uh, yeah, I mean, I actually thought Secret Life of Pets was, was fun. I enjoyed it, and uh, it's definitely, without a doubt, in my mind, their best movie. Yeah, yeah I think so. I, it, I mean, it's nothing, they're not reinventing the wheel, but it's kind of like with Peanuts. They, they executed it, I think, pretty well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. I think you'll like it. Yeah. I, I think it's the kind of thing that you will enjoy. Mm. I do. Well... We'll see. I'm just hoping they how the good so Christmas. Like it, well, the good thing about that, that one is Benedict Cumberbatch is in it, so I think that's gonna make it good for me. Yeah, I mean it's not like an Oscar not it shouldn't be an Oscar nominee, but I think you'll, I think you'll have fun with it. Yeah, compared to like the rest of the elimination movies. Certainly a billion times better than Minions, <laughs> in my opinion. Nice. All right. Yeah. Two points away. <laughs> On the million and the fifty dollar gift card. Oh my gosh! Uh, wow. Remember, you this is tense. You always walk away. All right. Do you? You have no lifeline, so it's all on. Okay. You. Here we go. Whew. <laughs> did you ever think you'd be get this far? No, I did not. Uh, okay. Five hundred. That's right. This is only episode two, so, so this is no good. Okay. Five hundred thousand <laughs> points. Let's go. Which of the following animated Peanuts TV specials was the most recent to air? Oh, TV question. Someday you'll find her, Charlie Brown. What have we learned, Charlie Brown? She's a good state, Charlie Brown. It's Arbor Day, Charlie Brown. <laughs> I don't know this one. I I, I think I will uh, I will bow out. Um... Because uh, I, I I just don't know when when the when the different ones aired. I I know there is an Arbor Day uh, one and what have we learned? Charlie Brown sounds familiar. She's a good skate, Charlie Brown. That doesn't sound real, but probably is. Um, someday you'll find her, Charlie Brown. Uh, I yeah I'll I'll step out now because uh, I just don't know this one. But if I was if I was gonna guess, um, uh, maybe I I guess because I'm pretty sure Arbor Day is old. Mm -hmm. um, if I was gonna guess, I I I guess maybe I'd say. Uh, maybe I'd say C. She's a good skate, but I think I'll I'll pull out because I really have no idea on this one. So you don't want to, is that your final answer? You're walking away. Walking away is final answer. Okay. Congratulations! <laughs> you can walk away two hundred fifty thousand points, and if there's around two, there's most definite chance you'll be in the round. All right. So you said you said if you're taking a guess, you'd go with C. She's a good skate, right? Yeah, just because that sounds modern. I don't know. If you had told me, see, she's a good skate, Charlie Brown, final answer, you wouldn't be leaving here with 250,000 points. You'd be leaving with 32,000 ah, points. Ah, see, woohoo! <laughs> the correct answer actually was, what have we learned, Charlie Brown? Okay. It's a okay. Memorial Day special. And all, all of those are real peanut specials. Are they all real, huh? Yeah. There you go. All right. So. All right. Anyway, um, stop that, okay? Wow, that was an exciting game. That, that was. I feel guys. much better about this than last time. Next time we can do a game with all Flintstone questions to balance it out. 
All right. right. Well, that was fun. Thanks for inviting me back. Yeah, no problem. Is there anything you want to say before you go? Any personal thing on your blog or anything you want to put? Yeah, I mean, check out the blog. Check out – I do – I've been doing on my uh, YouTube channel weekly uh, um, Disney canon reviews, and I just posted today uh, my review of Hercules. So that's where right. I'm at. So definitely want to check that out. Uh, and also, yeah. for those of you, you can also check out our website, uh, the Animation Addicts website, rotoscopers.com. We've been going through every single Disney canon film. Yes, that has been so much fun. Yeah, and just, just Moana. <laughs> yeah, that has been so gratifying to see. I've really enjoyed that. And um, it's been neat to see everyone get so excited. And I like the fact that we haven't been doing grades. We've just been celebrating and talking about the movies because people get too worked up into – you know, how many stars did you give it? How, what grade did you give it? You know, instead of really like just celebrating the films and talking about what you liked and what you didn't like. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, so. I wonder where we are. Uh, we did Aladdin recently, right? What's that? What's the last movie they did? Aladdin? Aladdin, yeah, I think. Oh. And yeah. The Aladdin so. should be coming up soon. <laughs> so we get uh, Pocahontas and, uh, and Hunchback of Notre Dame, which will both be reviewed by MJ. Uh, okay. Yeah, so that'll be fun. Yeah, that'll be fun. So check that out, and I'll post links to that too uh, down below. So once again, tune in next time for episode three, and we'll see if anyone goes farther than Rachel, but I don't think it's going to happen. Thanks for coming on, Rachel. Thank you. Bye.